Sustainability is not a flavor of the month, right? Yeah. For us, if you look at our vision, we want to own this space. Lovely to see you all, those who are here. This is going to be definitely an exciting conversation. And Dr. Chilwan, thank you for uh, being here as well. So we will just quickly jump to the point over here. Now, Dr. Adnan, I mean, I've seen the Bay Islamic Bank grow year over year under your leadership. I've seen this. I've seen the bank grow, and I've uh, heard multiple individuals within the industry and outside as well talking about your leadership, and of course, at the same time, talking about the bank growing as well. And uh, the important thing would be the bank has certainly taken some first steps as well, like first initiatives, first, uh, I would say, product launches, and also one of the first banks that has also stepped into the sustainable finance space. So could you tell me, like, and could you tell all of us what has been the journey that Dubai Islamic Bank has seen when it comes to sustainable finance? Sure, uh, definitely, Namir. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, backstage, me and Namir were talking uh, to each other, and we promised uh, each other that we'll keep this very succinct, very short, because... Uh, well, I know, had my fingers crossed then, so... Yeah, so we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll try and keep this as engaging and entertaining as we can. Um, Namir, I think uh, you've asked me a question around one Dubai Islamic Bank uh, and its uh, lineage in how well it has done over the yeah. last decade or so. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, leading into the sustainability uh, discussions. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you actually know the history of the bank, uh, you know, Dubai Islamic Bank uh, is the first Islamic bank in the world, right? Yeah. So we started our operations in 1975, uh, being an Islamic bank. And, uh, you know, that uh, leads very well into sustainability because, you know, Islamic banking and the DNA of that model uh, is very well intertwined with sustainability at the, at the heart of everything that we do. Correct. Because uh, if, you, if you know about Islamic banking, and I'm sure the audience does, uh, it, uh, it, it, it's uh, based on many principles that are today an inherent part of what we are terming as sustainability and ESG and then, you know, everybody around the world is coming up with frameworks. Agreed. But that to us is our, uh, our modus operandi. That's Correct. our model. Correct. So, you know, it's just a very natural way of us looking at sustainability because it's within, uh, you know, the very DNA of it's Islamic It's actually finance. right. So, I mean, in terms of like Islamic finance itself, I've seen Islamic finance and the fundamentals and the foundations of Islamic finance naturally favoring sustainable finance. And which brings me to the point, right? So while we see that sustainability and Islamic finance has a very, I would say, a good intersection between the two, there's a good merge, you're also amongst the first banks to launch the Green Sukuks. What was the rationale behind that? So I think, uh, you know, uh, being a leading uh, a bank, a regional bank and an Islamic bank, it was very important for us to also, um, uh, you know, enter into and take the sustainability space forward. In order yeah. for us to do that, it was very natural that we, we wanted to make sure that there is a complete strategy that revolves around how we are going to do this, right? For, for us, uh, you know, if you just look at the way we are operating uh, our model, it's not Sustainability is not a flavor of the month, right? Yeah. For us, if you look at our vision, we want to own this space. And in order to get there in, in the right manner, it was very important mm. that we build a framework around our operations. Yeah. Uh, the sustainability finance framework that you're referring to, even yeah. if I take a step back, we came up with a, st a sustainable strategic framework okay. before we went into a sustainable finance framework. All right. And that strategy revolved around how do you em embed sustainability in the heart of the organization in everything that it does. And of course, what was very natural was, being a, f a financial institution, we wanted to make sure that we tie this around with the financing so framework. the talk, the, Absolutely, the financing framework that you're referring to. And this financing framework allows us to, one, embed everything that we do within our, uh, our culture, yeah. within our um, uh, modus operandi, but more importantly, it allows us to access, uh, you know, capital markets in uh, that 
that would be done in order to make sure that we have sustainable uh, funding that Correct. is required Correct. in order to invest in the sustainable assets that we want to build over time. So uh, in order to, to uh, tap those capital markets, it was important for us that we come up with a strategic framework yeah. and then uh, that led to a sustainable finance framework. No, well, it's so important what you mentioned, right? The, the overall transition. And I totally see that financial services plays a pivotal role when it comes to the net zero transition that we're looking at. And specifically, payments, I mean, uh, it's off the topic here, but payments plays a very large role. Like, it's, if you're looking at uh, financial services and the larger carbon, you know, emissions problem that we're looking at, we're looking at 51 billion tons of carbon emissions that are produced annually, right? And I always say carbon emissions is a product of consumption. You consume to emit. And consumption is a product of spending, and spending is a product of payments. It's always good to get to the genesis point. But that brings me to the point, um, like, how do you see the market uh, moving and embracing sustainable finance in the GCC and in the wider MENA market too? So we've, we've seen over the last couple of years or so uh, that, you know, the market is evolving towards sustainable financing initiatives, right? Yeah. Uh, not just in the payment space, but also within traditional banking as such. Correct. And it's extremely important that in order to get there, you've got to come up with these financing frameworks that we alluded to. And these financing frameworks that we have set up are looking at two things. Yeah. So if you take a step back and you look at how a bank operates, right, you've got two sides of what we call a balance sheet, right? Correct. And it, if you are in any type of a business, everybody would know that your balance sheet would mean assets and your balance sheet would mean liabilities. Correct. Now, this strategic finance framework, sustainable finance framework that we've come up with actually, um, uh, you know, gives way to make sure that both sides of your balance sheet are matched, i.e. assets sense. and liabilities. So one is come up with a financing framework, which we've done, allows us to go and access, let's say, capital markets get that funding that is required, and then use that funding in order to invest in sustainable finance projects. Makes sense. So when a company that would come forward wants to look at, let's say, financing their, their working capital, mm -hmm. if they are sustainable in nature, we make sure that these liabilities that we have captured from the market, w given our sustainable finance framework, is then given to this company to invest. So you are creating an ecosystem Correct. of sustainable finance, which is even beyond the payment systems that you are talking about. Well, that's amazing, right? And how you're basically saying that it's not just payments, it's, it's major verticals that you know, a bank and a financial service institution is gonna touch base on. Now, as we're talking about how financial services is going to play a role and a bank will play a role, now let's also connect the dots with the overall UAE's national agenda as well of being net zero by 2050. How does Dubai Islamic Bank, as per your strategic framework, strategic sustainable uh, framework and the finance framework, how do you see complementing and uh, contributing towards that national agenda? So I think, uh, you know, not a single institution can, can uh, uh, you know, play their own role towards this national agenda, right? Correct. Everybody has to come together. So UAE's national agenda of becoming net zero by 2050 is an uh, ambition that UAE has put forward. And all of us, not just within the finance industry, but every sector needs to play a part in making that ambition, uh, uh, you know, come true. So for us, it's extremely important that, like I said, uh, we try and embed yeah. all of the uh, all of what we are doing within our framework. So, for example, we we would work on the E of uh, ESG, the S of uh, ESG, and the G of ESG in order to make sure that we are contributing our own part yeah. towards that uh, uh, national net zero uh, uh, agenda. Makes now, sense. of course, uh, the 2050 agenda that the UAE has revolves around E and not so much around S and G. Right? So they are looking to become net zero by 2050 environmentally. For us, what we have done, uh, many initiatives that we have uh, you know, embarked upon. But for example, we are looking at you know, making sure that we, uh, we play a part in, uh, uh, in the environment by planting trees. Right? I think there was a colleague uh, before our session from uh, Marriott, if I remember, was talking about you know, 12,000 trees being planted uh, uh, you know, in a year. Uh, by uh, by Marriott, uh, you know you will be uh, you will be surprised to know that we have come up with an initiative called called One Tree for Everyone, where 
every customer that is onboarded within mm. Dubai Islamic Bank, mm. we are planting a tree for that customer. Yeah. And guess what? We are doing 12,000 of them every month. Fantastic. So by the end of this year, we would probably have our 150 to 180,000 trees. So which brings me to the point now, I mean, tree plantation is great. I have my views on that in the sense that I think as an what you're doing as a bank is great because you're moving the capital towards those projects, right? Which is really important because, I mean, those who are in the space would know that today we need to take capital towards projects to reduce the cost for those projects so that once it's going to the end customer, it's cheaper and it's more scalable. And scale can only be achieve, achieved when there's some capital being, you know, invested into those projects. But my question to you would be on the terms of the bank. Like, when the bank is looking to achieve or contribute towards the agenda, how do you see partnerships with technology companies enabling the bank doing that? So, uh, of course, partnership with technology companies digitally is extremely important. Like, yeah. you know, the two partnerships that come to my mind, we've tied up with, for example, Etisalat. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, joined our hands and are part of their uh, Trade Connect platform. Yeah. Uh, you know, we are also the sole representative within the UAE for Trade Club Alliances. So these are technology, uh, uh, you know, partnerships that we have, uh, we have done because they would only further you know, uh, the UAE's ambition yeah. of becoming uh, a net zero, um, uh, you know, country by 2050. Fantastic. Now, which brings me to the point, the next point, which is on the product side. I see that uh, you are amongst also the first banks to launch green auto, uh, I would say, financing as well, which is Evolve, I believe, right? And affordable housing as well, which is a very important part of SDGs, right? So SDGs, if we talk about it, it's not just one climate action, we're talking about all 17 of them. Now, how do you see your product proposition evolving moving forward from what you have today? You know, if I take a step back, not just this product proposition, but I started by saying that Islamic banking and the, the inherent nature of Islamic banking is very close to the 17 SDGs that we are talking about, Brilliant. right? The UN has come up with these 17 SDGs, but if you actually look at our the way we've been operating, and any Islamic bank for that matter operates, uh, you know, these SDGs or so-called SDGs are within the heart and DNA of any Islamic bank. So, you know, the model believes in equality, the model believes in uh, making sure, uh, you know, uh, environment is protected, the model believes in uh, making sure that you stay away from projects that are harmful to the, to the, um, uh, to the environment at large. Yeah. So these couple of projects that you're talking about, which is our contribution towards the E, of the ESG, yeah. uh, as in, uh, you know, green financing uh, through Evolve, or even we are coming up with a new product, which would be green affordable housing. Yeah. So this is, uh, uh, you know, um, this is our contribution towards that E, but it's also very close to our heart, because if yeah. you see, and if you know that when you look at uh, greenhouse gases emission, yeah. you know, globally, you know, 50% of the uh, GHGs are from the automotive industry. Right? So in order, so this is our part of trying to make sure that we come up with our financing packages for electric vehicles. We need to incentivize Absolutely, right? the customer to do and, that. And, and honestly speaking, it has done well for us. Yeah. And um, you know, we are just only going to kind of enhance it from here because in no time, this, this portfolio is, we is growing. We look forward to more such, in, uh, I would say, incentives from your bank. Absolutely. And uh, the last one, my last question to you, Dr. Adnan, would be that how do you see the bank leveraging from the global best practices that are happening from different places from all over the world. How do you see the bank evolving in terms of its product propositions that you have currently? I mean, I know that you spoke about that you will continue to build more products, but adhering to the global best practices, how do you see that shaping up your strategy moving forward? And what can we expect as the audience uh, moving ahead from, uh, you know, from this conversation from the Bay Islamic Bank? So I think, first of all, uh, you know, sustainability is here to stay, right? Uh, and, and, you know... Oh, would, would you say that it's, it's now becoming a part of a lifestyle? It is embedded now. You know, I think everybody has realized that climate change is not a hoax. Yeah. Right? And everybody around uh, the globe is now realizing that, uh, you know, we've got to come up with sustainability initiatives yeah. in order to make this world a better place, right? Correct. And, and for, for the world to survive. 
because uh, the way things are uh, things are evolving, I think if we do not take this seriously right now, yeah. um, uh, you know, it's it's going to be catastrophe. So, uh, what do you expect? Uh, you know, I I say that we do not have a choice actually, because if we want to continue, uh, well, we did have a choice, but that was for probably 40 years ago. Absolutely, years ago, and, and today today we don't have a choice, yes. and that's why. I am very careful in saying that this is not a flavor of the month, at least for Dubai Islamic yeah. Bank. We want to own this space. And it's extremely important to understand that the, the uh, global dynamics are changing. So even as a financial institution, all our stakeholders are wanting to know that what are our efforts in making our operations more sustainable. So when I say about stakeholders, it's not just regulators. Customers demand that. Today, your employees are demanding that. Right. Your investors are demanding that. So when we do these so global roadshows, yeah. uh, sorry, Namir, but when we do these global roadshows within our sustainable finance framework, yeah. uh, you will be surprised the kind of questions that uh, investors want to know before investing in your, in your sukuk. Fantastic. Because for them, it's, this is not just uh, uh, you know, hogwash. You've got to prove that the funds that you are going to, to generate or accumulate yeah. through your issuances are going to the right causes. And all of this is then collaborated and corroborated in the form of the G, which is the governance of ESG. So I think, uh, uh, you know, gone are those days where people could kind of, you know, just pull the wrapper, do something for, uh, for uh, you know, optics and theatrics. But uh, this is more serious business now. And being a leading financial institution governed by Islamic finance principles, yeah. right, it makes it very easy and very natural for us to be sustainable in, in a way. And uh, one, one point, right, there's one misconception that I've seen in the market that sustainability is linked to charity, right? Um, I believe, and I'm being a founder myself of a sustainability-focused climate fintech, we had to face this. But it is significantly an exciting revenue opportunity as well, right? It's a new transition. It is the transition era. Everything we see around us is that we touch, feel, hear, see is going to be impacted by it, and that also needs financing, right? So thank you for talking about the point of credibility, Dr. Adnan. And, um, it's very important to also ensure that credibility stays a very strong part of whatever we do. And I'm sure your bank has been playing, you know, as you mentioned, a very strong uh, part in ensuring that too. Dr. Adnan, it was a pleasure speaking to you. Pleasure a quick chat. Namir. Thank Always you. insightful hearing you. Thank and I'm you sure the much. audience also enjoyed it as well. Thank you. And thank you very much for your time. And audience, thank you as well. Thank, thank you. Thank you.